Welcome everyone to this tutorial on large genome assembly and polishing. Here is the tutorial material and while I'm showing this tutorial I'll have this open in a different window and I'll show you the steps that I'm following in the Galaxy window. So in this tutorial we're looking at what genome assembly is so I recommend reading the introductory material here if you're not familiar with some of these concepts. We'll be looking at um, some of the challenges in particularly assembling these large genomes back into what we are hypothesizing as their original chromosomes. So there are a lot of challenges here and um, we'll definitely see that with this test data set and you'll no doubt see that with any real data sets that you um, try to assemble as well. And that's just part of the current landscape of genome assembly where we're still in the process of developing all of the tools and the back-end computation to try and work with these huge volumes of data. You should be able to use your own real research data with the workflows described here. So we do always recommend though checking each tool separately on any data that you want to use and also perhaps subsampling your real data sets so that any problems you can find out more quickly rather than setting a big job running and having to wait a long time. And if there are any um, issues with the tools or the data uh, running on those tools, then contact the people who are administering your particular Galaxy server. Today, I'll be showing these workflows running in the Galaxy Australia server. And again, if you are using your real data in um, with these workflows, keep in mind that so many genomes have never been assembled before. So it's likely there are going to be particular settings in the tools that you'll need to change or customize so that they're relevant for your input data as well as your research questions. So in an ideal world, we would be able to make perfect assembly workflows that you could just put your data in and run. But I think if you want to get the most out of your data and your research, you really want to be thinking about what those tools are doing and whether that's working well with your particular data type. So in this tutorial, we're covering various steps. This is a, a picture of the analysis workflow that we'll be following. So this involves quality control, um, counting the KMAs in the reads to get an idea about the genome characteristics, trimming and filtering reads, assembling and polishing the genome, and then trying to assess the quality of our genome assembly. In this tutorial, we'll actually run these as separate workflows, and we may change some of the parameters in each of the workflows as we run them. So rather than running all of the separate tools, we'll actually be running a set of workflows. In the tutorial, we talk about how you can run workflows in Galaxy and where you can import these workflows from. Okay, so now we will start with importing the data. So let's give our Galaxy history a name. And then in the tutorial document, there is a list of the files that we need to import. So I'll copy that list. Then I'll go here into upload data, paste fetch data, paste those file names in there, start and close. And these files will now start to um, load into the current history. So now our files have imported and we just need to check that they're in the correct format. So you'll notice you've got three eucalyptus files. They've got the sequencing reads in them and we need to check they're in the format fastq.gz. If they're not in that format, make sure you click on the pencil icon for each of these three eucalyptus files and assign the correct data type, which is fastq.gz. 
Sometimes Galaxy will upload them as fastqsanger.gz, but they need to be fastq for this tutorial. The next step is to check the read quality. So for this step, we're going to run our first workflow, which is the data QC workflow. And this is going to report some statistics from our sequencing reads. So in the tutorial document, it explains how we can import this workflow. And I'll just show you that here. So we can copy the link from the tutorial. And then we want to import it into our own um, Galaxy set of workflows. And then that should now appear in our list of workflows. And your list of workflows will look different to mine, but it should load as the top workflow. And once that workflow has loaded into your list, we can run this workflow with the run button. And in this case, I usually expand to the full workflow form just so I can see exactly what's happening. Here, we, we won't send our results to a new history. We're just going to do all of our workflows in the current history. And we need to check our input files are correct. So Galaxy will guess, but we need to check. So for long reads, we want to make sure it's the nano file and nanopore reads. So that's correct. For our Illumina reads, we want to check that it's the R1 FastQ reads. And then for the Illumina reads, R2. So that's our paired Illumina reads. And in this particular workflow, all of the parameters have already been set to particular defaults. And you can always look at those by looking at the workflow either here or in the workflow canvas. And you can change anything that you want to change. So we won't look at all these settings currently, but we will now run our workflow. The workflow is now running. We can see the workflow invocation, and this describes the inputs and the outputs and the steps that are being run. So as the workflow runs, this will fill out. So it shows us what inputs we used in this particular run of the workflow, what outputs we're hoping to get, and then more detail about all of the steps that are being done in this workflow. So to get a full idea of what's in here, have a look in the tutorial document and also at the workflow itself. And then you can see the tools that have been used in this workflow, uh, which in this case are the nanoplot tool and the fastQC tool, and then combining those results with the multiQC tool. And we can see our jobs are starting to run here in the history. And when they, they've finished running, they'll turn green. Let's have a look at some of our results. Uh, first, we'll have a look at these multi-QC results. And we'll just collapse some of our side panels so we can see a bit more clearly here. This is going to summarize our Illumina reads, the results from FastQC. And for example, one of the things we can look at is the sequence quality histograms. And we can see that the reads are quite good quality. There's some drop off in quality at the end, but not very much at all. And we could also look at our nanoplot results. Let's have a look at that HTML report. And in particular, let's have a look at read lengths versus average read quality. And we can get lots of information there. And so from these QC results, uh, you might then make further decisions about, firstly, whether your reads are of high enough quality for your particular analysis that you want to do. And also, if you need particular settings on any filtering or trimming of reads according to their quality.
now we will look at some of the genome characteristics and we'll do this by counting the k-mers in the sequencing reads and there's more about this explained in the tutorial document so what I've done is I've imported the workflow for this one already this is the k-mer counting workflow and we can look at that in our workflow list so I imported it the same way that we did in the previous step for the data QC workflow so here's our came accounting workflow and with all these workflows one way of looking at them in more detail is clicking the edit button and then you can view them in what we call the workflow canvas and this is just a nice way of seeing how all the tools and the inputs and outputs are connected together this one's not a particularly complicated one we'll collapse our side panels here so this is a very simple one um, but it gives you the idea of how things are connected there's the input going into this particular tool and that tool's output is going into this tool and then these are all of our outputs here from the actual workflow and this is another place where you can see all of the settings that have been put into the workflow and you can decide whether they're right for your data or if you want to change them so for example let's have a look at the Merrill settings by clicking on that tool and it brings up the tool over here at the right and all of the settings that have been put in so these are some of the things that you, you may want to change for various reasons so you exit back out of that workflow canvas and again we've got our workflow here in the list and we're going to run that again just with the results going into our current history and all we need to do is check that we've got our correct input file here which is the r1 file and click run we have our results now so one of the things we'll look at is the genome scope transformed linear plot click on the eye icon just make that a bit smaller so this is a graph of the results of our came accounting and it will tell us um, some of the estimates it's made about the genome size and the ploid uh, so this is discussed more in the tutorial document but this is quite a useful graph as a result from our came accounting now we will run the step for trimming and filtering the reads so I've already imported this workflow and we can just run it here directly and we need to give it the correct inputs so check it's got R1 here, R2, and the nanopore reads here, and we can run that. In the tutorial, I discuss more a lot about what settings have been put in there for the defaults, but note that you will most likely want to change some or all of those um, existing settings if you're working on this with real data let's have a look at some of our results we'll have a look at the fast p results for the illumina reads click here with the eye icon and we can just get a lot of information there about the results of fast p from both the trimming and the filtering that we did in this workflow And now we're up to the genome assembly stage so we're going to do that with a assembly tool called fly so again I've already imported this workflow you can see that here at the top of the workflow list so import that into your own uh, list of workflows and then let's run that and we'll expand to the full workflow form so for this one we need to give it the input long reads and we'll give it the reads 
that went through the trimming and filtering step. So these are the fast P filtered long reads. And then we can see what tools this workflow is using. The main tool is the fly assembly tool and all of the settings in there. And then we're going to run some tools to look at the results of that assembly. So faster statistics, bandage image to get a um, visualization of the actual assembly graph and the QAST um, genome report. So we can just run this directly from here. And that may take a little bit of time to run. The workflow has now finished and all of our output files are at the top of our current history. We'll have a look at the QAST results. So we'll click on the QAST tabular report. And this, this gives us some really basic statistics about our assembly. You can see the total length here is almost a million base pairs. Our largest contig is 235,000 base pairs. And we have 152 contigs. Your results probably won't be exactly the same, but they'll likely be similar. We can also have a look at the QAST HTML report and look at the actual contigs here. Just to get a visualization of the sizes and the distribution of sizes of contigs. And we can have a look at the bandage image of the assembly graph. And we can see that lots of our contigs have been joined here in this top left picture. And we also have a lot of unjoined contigs. Some of them appear to be circular. We're now up to the assembly polishing stage. So I have imported the workflow and we can have a look at it in the workflow canvas. This is actually quite a complicated workflow because it involves sub workflows. So in here we have three main steps, which are to polish the assembly with Raycon, then with Madaka, and then with Raycon again. But each of those Raycon steps are their own workflow with their own set of steps, including mapping with Minimap and iterating that polishing step several times. So it's much simpler to view this when we paste in the sub workflow, just as a sort of a single box here. We can run that now. And what we need to give it as input is the assembly that we want it to polish. So this will be our fly assembly, the consensus. I'll just double check that's the correct one. This should be a faster file. And that's correct. So yes, that's the assembly that we want to polish. Then we need to give it the long reads. We want to give it the same set that we actually used in making this assembly, which in this case was the output from fast P. So we want the fast P filtered long reads. We need to check this is the correct setting here. We have Oxford nanopore data, so that's correct here. And we'll also give it the R1 Illumina reads.
and we can run that. And now we can look at our polishing results. We can look at first our original genome assembly and the length of that by looking at the faster statistics. So the original length was 9 million, about 800,000 base pairs. And then after all of these polishing steps, we can see our final assembly is here. It's the Raycon polished assembly faster file. And the stats on that are that the, the assembly is slightly smaller, which we would expect. Um, that often happens with polishing. Some of the mistakes get removed. So now the assembly is about 9,600,000. Now we'll assess the quality of the genome that we assembled. So we have a workflow for this that I've already imported. Let's run that. We need to give it the polished assembly, which is file 61 in this case. Your, yours might have a different number, but it's the Raycon short reads polished assembly. And then we're also going to give it a reference genome. Originally, when we imported our files, we imported a reference genome, a Arabidopsis in a faster file. In this case, that is not closely related to our data that we're using, which is from a eucalyptus, but we're just going to use that here as an example to see what the results might look like. And we'll run that workflow. And now we're looking at the results from assessing the quality of our assembled genome. Our Busco jobs are still running, but we'll have a look at the class results. So looking at the HTML report, and we'll look at the Contig browser here. And this will give you an example of how well your assembled Contigs have matched to your reference genome. And ideally here, you would put in a closely related reference genome. We haven't in this case, we've just used Arabidopsis. But in a real analysis, you could put in a closely related genome. And then following that, you'll also get results from Busco, which will show you whether the expected genes were found in those assembled contexts. So let's have a look at the summary of all the things that we've done in this tutorial. This is the flowchart again, showing all the steps that we did. We did quality control using FastQC and Nanoplot. Came accounting, which used the tools Merrill and GenomeScope. Then we trimmed and filtered the reads using FastP. From there, we assembled those trimmed and filtered reads using the fly assembly tool. And we looked at some of the results. In particular, we used the bandage tool to look at the genome assembly graph. Then we polished the assembly using Raycon and Medaka. And finally, we assessed the quality of our assembled genome using the tools Busco and Clast. Thanks for following today's tutorial on large genome assembly and polishing. And we hope it's been useful to you, whether using this test data or your own research data. And if possible, we would love any feedback that you can leave by clicking on this link at the bottom of the tutorial. Thank you.